we're going to talk about place value uh, of decimals. So you probably remember a lot of this, but let's just review. There's a pattern to our place value. Let's start by looking over in the whole numbers. And our pattern is always going to be 1, 10, 100. 1, 10, 100. 1, 10, 100. 1, 10, 100. And then we just have to keep up with what we're dealing with. So for example, 1, 10, 100 is just the hundreds. And then we are dealing with thousands, one thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Then we're dealing with millions, one millions, ten millions, hundred millions. And then we're dealing with billions, one billions, ten billions, hundred billions. And then after that is trillions. So what you really need to memorize is one tens, hundreds, and then hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. And it goes on after that, um, but that's certainly enough information. So then we're going to look over on the other side of our decimal, the right-hand side, and the numbers are going to get smaller, and the place values are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller on this side, whereas the place values ended up getting bigger and bigger and bigger on the left side. Now on the right-hand side, instead of starting with ones, we're going to start with tenths, and then hundredths, and then we start the pattern over that we're used to, one, ten, hundred, one, ten, the next one would be hundred as well. And then the other pattern repeats as well, except instead of saying thousands, we say thousandths, one thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, one millionths, ten millionths, hundred millionths. So that's all there is for place value. So let's do a little practice with our place value. Here is a number and I would like for you to figure out how you would actually say this number or write this number out. I know it's a really long number, but give it a shot. It's 236 billion, 146 million, 251,987, and 2,316,895 2 ten millionths. Now try writing out this decimal in words. And I've put some commas in here to help you out. They don't really belong there, but it'll help you to read it correctly. So give it a shot. You should end up with 361 and... 24 trillion 568 billion 942 million 614,683 hundred trillions. You always want to say whatever's this last place value when you end a decimal. And again, these decimal these commas don't really belong in there. It's just it's helpful when reading something this difficult. Try this problem write it out. You'll end up with 408 and 18 hundred trillionths. Now that we understand about place value and how to read our decimals correctly, we're going to talk about comparing decimals, figuring out which one's bigger and which one's smaller. So in this example, the first example here I have 678 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. So 678 hundred thousandths and 687 hundred thousandths. And we want to see which one's bigger. So you may be able to just look at it and see that 678 is smaller than 687. But if you have a hard time and you get confused easily, it is help, helpful to line up same place values and look at them and compare them. So you start with each place value on the starting with the left hand side and work your way to the right. Zeros are the same, zeros are the same, zeros are the same, sixes are the same. So then we compare seven and eight and eight is larger, therefore this number 687 hundred thousandths is going to be the larger number. And then this last place value doesn't matter because we've already figured out which one's larger. So here's some notation. 
we could say 678 hundred thousandths is less than 687 hundred thousandths or 687 hundred thousandths is greater than 678 hundred thousandths. So here's some another example of comparing and in this example again I'm just going down through each place value until I get to one that's bigger than the other. So one and one's the same, two and two's the same, zero and zero is the same, two and two's the same, 2 and 1 are not the same. So which one's bigger? This top one, right? And again, here's the notation. So pause the video and I'd like you to put each of these groups of numbers in order from least to greatest and then check your answers and see how you're doing. Here are my answers with my steps. Pause the video and check your answers. Next, we're going to review rounding decimals. So here's an example of the decimal 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. And I can tell that because there are two that are shaded out of 10. 2 out of 10 is the same thing as 2 tenths. And um, then I have half of one shaded. So it's uh, two, uh, 0.25 or 25 hundredths. Now I need to figure out what to round this to if I'm rounding it say to the tenths place. Well when you look at this can you tell if there if this is going to be closer to having all of um, three tenths shaded in or is it closer to not having um, any of the three tenths shaded in and just having two tenths. So that's kind of what you're thinking about when you're rounding. Well the rule is whenever you have a 0.5 or whenever you have a 5 or bigger you go ahead and round up. So we would go ahead and round this to be the same thing or to round to equal to be approximately 3 tenths. And so the idea with rounding is if you're halfway in between or more, go on up to the next number. If you're less than halfway in between, go down to the previous number. So here are our rules. Look at the digit after the place value that needs rounding. So here we have a picture of what looks like 53 hundredths shaded. Okay, so we're looking, and let's say we're going to round to the nearest tenths. So it says look at the digit after the place value that needs rounding. Okay, so we're looking at the place value after this needs rounding, so that would be 3. The next thing you do is it says if the place value of the number, of that number, the needs rounding is 4 or less, leave the number that is being rounded the same. So basically we lo we're looking at this number, is that 4 or less? Yes. So what we're going to do is change this to 0.5 and we're going to drop the 3. So we're just leaving it. We're not rounding up and you never round down. Uh, you would either keep it as 0.5 or round it up to 0.6. And the reason why again, if you can understand this, is if you look at where you're halfway in between um, the next two numbers, like halfway in between our 5, 0.5 and 0.6, if we're closer, if we're halfway in between or closer to the 0.6, then we'd round up. If we're not halfway in between or less than that, we're going to just drop the digit after the place value we're dealing with. So we just drop the 3. So this is approximately 0.5 and I use approximate symbols to show that I'm rounding. So again, if the place value after the number that needs rounding is 4 or less, leave the number that is being rounded the same and you drop off any additional digits. If the place value after the number that needs rounding is greater than 4, so 5 or bigger, then round up by 1. So this would have rounded to 0.6 if the number 3 had been 5 or larger. 
So go ahead and complete these problems and then check back to see that you did them correctly. The first section you're rounding to the nearest tenths and the second section you're rounding to the nearest hundredths. So to get you started, make sure you're doing this correctly. And the first one, if I'm rounding to the nearest tenths, I want to round, decide what to do with that two, so I need to look at the three. Well, since that's a three, that's less than five, therefore I would round this to 1.2. And let's look in the hundredths. So here I'm rounded to the nearest hundredths. So the hundredths is where my three is. Actually, let me choose a different. My hundredths is where my one is. I'll do this example. And so I'm going to be looking at the place value after my hundredths, which is my thousandths, to help me decide what to do. So what do you think? What happened? 2.71 or 2.72? going to be 2.72 because the 7 is 5 or bigger so it makes the 1 go up to a 2 and then you drop any digits after that uh, 2. Finish these and check back. Here are your answers. Pause the video and check your 